barbecue, bourbon, and cigars, ladies and gentlemen. I do not know if you need more in life. Okay, maybe one or two more things. But this is a good start. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy, live on the scene. The, the special Fingers Malloy bonus podcast at Mississippi Cigar Company in Gas City, where they're having the big Grant County barbecue showdown here. Any chance we get to do a little charity work and pair it with an Avo Expression cigar, we're going to do it, Fingers, because they said, hey, the barbecue is free and so are the cigars and foot rubs are welcome. You really hung up on foot rubs today. I'm not I'm into them myself, but I get how other people like them. And I don't want people to feel like somehow they have to be phobic of the foot uh, in, in, in today's society. You should be open and welcoming, like ketchup on a hot dog. Everything's okay. Well, as you know, Tony, I have two sayings in life. Is that right? Yeah. One is live, laugh, love. That is true. Fingers below has always been saying that. And two, if your feet hurt, you hurt all over. Wow. You say are- that all the time. Actually, I read that on a bumper sticker on the way here. Well, you should have. Should have copyrighted it. Smoking the Avo Expressions. This from the people at Davidoff, a six and a half by 50, which means it's six and a half inches long. Gee. Always makes fingers Malloy laugh. And the ring gauge is a 50. That's the diameter of the cigar or how thick it is around. Gee. Again, with the laughter. So a 64 ring gauge, as you know, is a full one inch uh, uh, around. This is an Ecuadorian, uh, Mexican in the binder, Dominican and U.S. in, in the filler. This plays so much like a Connecticut, but it is not that way. It just isn't. It has a lot more going for it than what I think but people see as uh, a, a typical uh, Connecticut. Although, you know, with those Ecuadorians, that's where you're going to get a lot of Connecticut rapper uh, that, is, that is out there. What is interesting is that, first of all, this plays as a full medium. Not a full, but a full medium. So there's a little bit there that's going to enter the cheek. There's a little bit of thickness in, in that smoke. And right off the bat, Fingers Malloy, there is a lovely bit of black pepper spice that just hits the center tongue. Yeah, uh, and also you're getting a fair amount of cedar uh, right on the light. Now, we just lit this, uh, so we're, we're barely in the first third. The hand feel is wonderful. Uh, nice, pleasant smoke, a nice, easy draw. Everything that you would expect uh, fr- from Avo, if you're going to be pairing this with food, we often talk so much talk so much about pairing it with bourbon, pairing it with a rum, pairing it with a beer, etc. But there is the conversation of, are you going to be pairing with food? Are you going to be smoking and eating at the same time? And how should you prepare for that? Uh, you don't want to overwhelm, right? So I wouldn't go anything spicier than this. You also don't want to have something that is, is uh, too, too rich, you want to be able to let the food carry and the cigar complement while still being able to get flavor out of it. There are only two ways to do this. A, practice, and B, practice. It's, it's just like your live, laugh, love. Yeah, it's true. Right? right? The first way is to practice, and the second way is to practice. What is it that your palate is all about? What actually moves you? If you're somebody who deals with high spice, you can handle a spicier cigar to go with your food, but you don't want it to overwhelm. You don't want it to be the story if you're pairing with the food. If that is too much to handle, don't. Don't smoke while you're eating. Smoke after you eat. It's why I stopped smoking cigars with scotch. It's, it, it overwhelms. And, and I'm a Highlands guy, right? Uh, the, the, the Islay, the Lowlands, that real peat, that real moss doesn't move me in, uh, in, in, in the scotch at all. I want the smoke from the cigar. Here we are at a huge barbecue competition. How do you pair a cigar when you know you're eating barbecue sometimes i think you have to recognize that nothing matters you're just going to be shoving barbecue down your gullet and life is good and you know the the cigar will find its way sometimes you just got to be willing to say this isn't science this is love and it's fine and it's good and that's that's what i'm going with i have had some chicken i have had uh some pork belly don't tell my rabbi i have had uh some ribs i've had some brisket there is an oriental slaw going on around here i saw somebody eating cupcakes earlier there's there's pure debauchery happening Mississippi Cigar Club uh, here, or Cigar Company, I should say, in, in Gas City, Indiana. So Mississippi or Gas City is, can I say, halfway between Indianapolis and Fort Wayne? It's a nice way to put that. And for wherever you are, pick a large city, then pick a semi-large city, pick a place in the middle. That's Gas City. 
That for you, wherever that place is, that's your gas city. But for all of us, even if we aren't from Gas City, Gas City feels like home. Look at you. Sha la la la. I've been working on that. Yeah. Finding places to put the sha la la la. So we're smoking uh, the expressions here from Avo, and we're going to be getting into some, some food. And this, this is a, a charitable endeavor that we're doing. And uh, right now, that is all people are thinking about. Hurricane Helene, still top of mind, still the biggest story out there. We're going to get uh, into that and just where, where some of the latest is on this uh, bonus uh, podcast. O- only if you subscribe to the podcast, guys. Other people did not, will not get to hear this on radio. It's only you, and it's because we love you. Now, for this uh, Expressions Cigar, you want to break this up into thirds. First third, second third, final third. You want to break it up, and then you want to figure out what it is. Get your notebooks out. What did you eat today? What did you drink today? You want to write all that down. The weather today is gorgeous. This is spectacular, spectacular weather in Gas City, Indiana. All affects the palate. And then you want to write down your flavors. First, third, second, third. Fi- oh, someone brought me a cupcake. First, third, second, third, final third. What are the flavors that you're getting out of this? We're into the first third. We talked about that spice. You talked about cedar. Uh, do you have fingers? Can you d- differentiate between, fin- uh, between cedar and just wood in general? Not really. If I'm, if I'm being honest, listen, I, I think one of the things we do on this show is... Uh, we want to laugh, love. That is true. We're fans. We're, we're not going to break down a cigar to where there's uh, 15, 16 different notes. Uh, so for me, I, I, you know, I said cedar. Uh, wood. I, can you differentiate between cedar and, and a wood note? Well, I don't mean to brag, but yes, I can. Yes, oh, I, wow. Yes, I can indeed. Um, I, I would say cedar has has uh, a higher bite. And that's, I don't even know how I would explain that. I would say woody is more earthy and cedar is more bright. That is how I would, in, to the best of my ability, explain the difference when I'm catching those flavors. But you pick up other things that I'm, I'm never ever uh, good at, uh, leathers and, and, and things uh, like that. And there's a little bit of, of an undercurrent here, uh, of a little bit of thickness, as I discussed, uh, on the tongue, in, in the cheek. I don't know if I would call that leather uh, per se, but there definitely is a, a, a creaminess, almost a buttercream, uh, that, that's happening. The like buttercream that you get on top of a cupcake, kind of like an icing kind of thing, that's taking place from the expression. Are you sure you're getting buttercream from the cigar, or is it because you're just staring at that cupcake? The fact that I might stare at a cupcake doesn't mean I can taste the cupcake. And by the way, that's life advice, ladies and gentlemen. You can just take that wherever it is you like. The Avo Expressions is what it is that we're smoking here. It is limited edition. Fingers, is this in your humidor? For, oh gosh, I got to do math. I got to do math because it's a, it's a box of 15, uh-huh. not a box of 10. Carry the two. Uh, and then, uh, then there's a schwa. Times pi. And there's an umlaut. Those aren't math terms. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Do, 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 do. For $18 a stick. I have no idea. So far, so good. But we just lit this. Yeah. We're going to find out. I will tell you that for all the briskets that we've done and the pork shoulders that Fingers Malloy has made, it is chicken that could be the most vexing when it comes to smoking. Tea, drink, smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is Fingers Malloy on location, helping the people of Grant County. We're here at Mississinawa Cigar Company uh, for a big barbecue showdown. We're going to be we're going to be judging later, Fingers Malloy. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, etiquette you utilize before judging somebody else's barbecue? No, that's good. It's good. Important to go in with no plan. Oh, oh, no, I, oh you have a plan? Oh gosh, yeah. Did you bring, I, did do you bring, I have a plan? Did you bring your PowerPoint with uh, you? I, ha- I, have, I have a laser pointer and, and, a, and a sword. And if, and if it does not reach my expectations, I slash uh, the person with the sword. And then with the laser pointer, I point out where they went wrong. That's, that is my one, two step approach. A little different than live, laugh, love. Eh, but effective. Uh, it is chickens difficult. It's always been difficult. The, uh, uh, what is the, the marinade you want to use? How do you want to create flavor without overdoing it? Which, chi- which piece of the chicken are you going to do? How do you not uh, get to a place? Are you smoking and then, and then grilling? What is your, what is your plan? Because those are two very different things. Smoking and grilling are two very different things. 
All I know is you can end up with something that you didn't cook enough, which is a gross thing to serve. Undercooked chicken is gross. You, if it's an undercooked steak, it's all right. Everyone can survive it. Undercooked chicken is wholly unattractive, fingers warm. And that's what's challenging for people when they do chicken because, you know, I know growing up in my family, my mother was so paranoid about undercooked chicken that I, I'm pretty sure she let the internal temperature go up to 210 degrees before she served it. Well, there, so there's some of that that's just straight up cultural. Why people get things in a medium well or a well done uh, has to do not with, with uh, anything else really other than money. And if you couldn't afford a choice or cuts of meat, if it was meat that was about to go bad that day and that's when you could afford it, you cook the daylights out of it to make sure your family w w was safe. That is, that's something that I think is almost universal, not only nationwide, but, but, but worldwide. Uh, but when it comes to being able to afford the chicken, having time to do the chicken, undercooked chicken is just a, a gross thing. And, and here uh, at, at this, this barbecue festival where we're going to be we're going to be judging and again, laser pointer and a sword. Um, uh, uh, Biggins over there was doing that. That's what he calls himself. And we said, what's your name? And he said, they call me Biggins. And then I said, uh, do we want to know why? And he said, nope. And I said, sure. I'm going to leave it right there. Man calls himself Biggins. I'm going to call him Biggins. I have, no, I have no reason to judge. Do you have any reason to judge that, Fingers? I don't judge anyone for anything. That's so not true. I go uh, by the name Fingers Malloy. You think I'm judging anybody? Uh, it, Mother Malloy named you well and rest her soul. Uh, but he, he, was, he was describing how he does the chicken and, and some marinades that he does. We're not going to give it all away. And, a, and a, what, what he called some chicken dust, which which I'm assuming is his just proprietary blend, right? Unless it's the long-lost cousin of Ziggy Stardust. I got nothing. I was going to say I saw Chicken Dust open for Oingo Boingo at 88. Fantastic, fantastic show. show. The very big pyrotechnic event that happened midway through. Uh, but he's using chicken thighs. That is the answer, by the way. It's not that a chicken breast grilled isn't good. It's that a chicken thigh grilled or smoked is just juicier, just more flavorful. It's, in my view, a touch more forgiving. And, and to that, I'm, I'm thankful as a guy who's got brisket pretty well handled. I feel good about what I put out every time I make one. I don't, I don't feel that way about chicken in the slightest. So how do you feel about beer butt chicken? You ever do the beer butt chicken? With the, the can and the can of beer and in the, in the can with the, with the butt. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. I know. I mean, I know. Yeah. I know basically what it is, yeah. but I, can't, I, I haven't done it yet. Am I opposed to it? No, I'm not opposed to it. It's just I don't. I don't think that's the flavor I'm going for. There's something that I, I, I want to have. Uh, I want to have a touch of smoke. I do like a touch of char. Not overwhelming. Doesn't have to be overwhelming in the slightest. Um, and I just don't know. Do, you've done the beer butt can butt chicken. It's been years. Yeah. Does it's, that it's, give you the flavor? Well, it's when I had a gas grill. Uh, that's when I would do the beer butt chicken. But do you ever spatchcock a chicken? Do you spatchcock I, the chicken? I have. First of all, I'll say it again. Spatchcock the chicken? The answer is yes, I have. That's when you cut through a part of the chicken, I believe, cutting through the, 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 the breastbone there. And then you, you split it so it's fully laid out on, on your grill. That is, uh, to me... I think that's that's the only way. That's that is step one. It, it's if you're not going to do individual pieces, and for me again, the thighs is is the way. Uh, a spatchcock chicken is is allows you to get more of a consistent overall flavor, and and I'm I'm not quite sure how that how that doesn't work, how that doesn't flow. Have you done it? Uh, yeah, I I like to do that with chicken and uh, with my Thanksgiving turkey. Sometimes I'll spatchcock a turkey. Uh, which I, I think turns out really good as well. But, uh, you know, I don't know if this is just a, a family thing, but uh, f in my family, they don't, want, they don't want chicken thighs. They always want the, the chicken breast. Well, they're wrong, and you should tell them this is not what you're getting. Don't let your family decide what you make for dinner. Your family, and I'm not talking about your family, Fingers. Your family is lovely. Everybody else's family, morons. Absolute morons. Wow. You wouldn't, you wouldn't trust them with your kids. You don't let them drive. They're just terrible. You only visit them once a year in desperation just to make sure you're in the will. Why would you trust them? 
to decide what kind of chicken you make. That little monologue right there, you ripped it off from a Hallmark movie. I, I, I did. It starred Meredith Baxter Burney. That, can I please? Seriously? A Christina Lottie reference and a Meredith Baxter Burney in the same show? Didn't have that on the bingo card. Oh, we should have bingo cards. I, 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 and I believe this to be true. I don't... When, when it comes to brisket, we've discussed the idea that when it comes to a rub, there are things maybe your family likes more of this flavor than that flavor, and it's okay to make a rub that works. Not to how it's cooked. Not to what kind of brisket that, that you're picking up. I think the same thing is true about chicken. The family only eats chicken breast. It's because they're, A, the, the dark meat is a little bit stranger to them. The, the texture of, of a chicken thigh is a little bit different, and they aren't allowed to decide. They're no nothing. Well, the other thing, too, if is... If they weren't you, your family geez. members, you wouldn't talk to them. Jeez. And let me tell you something else about your family I, fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think uh, some of it comes down to a cost issue, too. I don't know if you've seen the, the cost of brisket lately, but it's gone through the roof. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I have, because I made a change about a year ago. I no longer buy choice briskets. Okay. I do prime. And if it's Angus, which is about the cow and not the cut, um, I, w- I will do it. But uh, the, the taste difference that we have gotten between choice and prime has been worth the money. And, of course, I have increased the amount of money that I'm spending on a brisket. I'm fully aware of what things cost. This is ridiculous. But thighs are still cheaper than, than chicken breasts. Yes. So, therefore, what are we arguing here? Why are you arguing? You're the one that seems very angry. What You're happened? the one listening will to your somebody, family. Will someone hug him, please? Well, Give him a hug. I'm waiting. I mean, we got like 200 people here, and not one person is off. No, sir. No, that was, that was a pity hug. Uh, someone uh, tried to give me a pity hug. Fingers one. And this, is, and this, this, isn't, is, this isn't college. I was going to say, this isn't prom. This isn't 3 a.m. Taco Bell. Someone's got to mean it. Eat, drink, smoke, your cigar, bourbon, foodie, extravaganza. I'm Tony Katz. That is Fingers Malloy here at Mississippi Cigar Company in Gas City. People are eating, drinking, falling in love. I've heard that three women have gotten pregnant here just from eating the barbecue. That's how good it is. Is that not true, Fingers Malloy? That's true, Tony. That's what I thought. Uh, only no fake news uh, here. Smoking the Avo Expressions. Uh, a, it is a really well done cigar by Avo, six and a half by fifty. Uh, that that eighteen dollar uh, price point MSRP. Um, that is going to make some people have a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of trepidation. I'm, I'm here to tell you that as a maybe not everyday cigar, but as your your weekend cigar, if you're somebody who likes the pleasure of a morning smoke and wants a little more punch to it. Absolutely well worth it if you could be on your back deck, back patio, uh, at your favorite cigar lounge on their deck. Like, they have a fantastic deck here at Mrs. Cinema Cigar Company. Um, then, yes. Then, yes, get the box of 15. Keep it in the humidor, even if you have to take it out of the box. And one a week, you've got yourself four months. Uh, wait, yeah, three months. Four months? Three, four months. Three and a half months. Well covered. Uh, I agree with you. I feel like this is the kind of cigar, say, uh, you know, you, you make your coffee in the morning and you're getting ready for your high-flying Detroit Lions to play at 1 o'clock. Wow. Yeah. And wow. Th- we're, we have this live audience, and there's one Detroit Lions fan going, There you go. Go Lions. This is a perfect cigar for uh, a football morning slash afternoon to sit back, uh, enjoy your coffee, make the transition over to bourbon. By the way, true the story, cigar. that woman yelling woo once dated Wayne Fonts. How's Wayne doing? Uh, well, I think he's been better. Oh, jeez. Wait, is he so, he's still alive. He's living in Florida. Yes, he like, is. Living his best life. Why you got to put him in an early grave? And I've never. Know. Not me. Not me, not now. There's way too much Detroit Lions talk on this show, everybody. I'll try and keep it to a minimum. But, yes, this cigar with coffee, as you're letting the morning just happen, giving yourself a good 90 minutes plus, the Avo Expressions, Nice way uh, to do it. But Fingers Malloy, it's time for News of the Week. Well, Tony, Augusta National has provided an update on the 2025 Masters after hurricane damage to the golf course. Apparently there was significant damage. Uh, from Helene? Yes, uh, from Helene. Augusta wow. National chairman 
Fred Ridley has vowed that next year's Masters will take place as scheduled despite a lot of damage caused by Hurricane Helene. So let's make sure we understand two things happening here. What the Masters can do in Augusta is very different than what the people around Asheville can do in North Carolina. I'm not surprised that they're going to do whatever they have to do to fix it up. They can't afford in the contract with CBS, I think it's CBS who has the deal, to, to let that go. But can we discuss the horror show that is Hurricane Helene and how we are going to be putting together? I've already had a couple of conversations. Uh, we're going to be putting together a herf to help, grabbing a bunch of cigar smokers, raising money. We, have, we know people in those areas. We've been interviewing uh, people, following what's happening. The disaster of Western North Carolina is hard to put into words. Yeah, to see some of the footage of uh, what Ash, uh, Asheville uh, looks like and uh, outside of uh, that area, North Carolina. Uh, I know I've been there. Have you been there, Tony? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful area. And, uh, you know, it, it, it the, the amount of damage that's been done and really... Unfortunately, a lot of people just didn't expect that storm to have that kind of, of of wallop in that area. So it's a double whammy. You weren't expecting it, and then the damage is there afterward. It's just a, it's, it's just a tragedy. So the big story is not the wind. It wasn't wind damage that that harmed people. It was the intensity of the rain and the flooding, washing away buildings, washing away families, and there is. There's already now the, giving up the idea on rescue and only getting into recovery, which is going to be horror show levels of, of, of awful. But the, the thing that I think people miss is that when you see uh, snowstorms and blocking of the roadways and everything else, that snow eventually melts. This is mud that is now taking control of every road. You, it is... It is near impossible it takes massive time to dig out to move it to the side to get it to a place where it isn't going to slide back on to and you have to get these things done in order to get the crews to where they need to be you have substations that have been completely wiped out you're ordering transformers these things don't just grow on a tree it takes a tremendous amount to create these things build these things are sometimes built to order they sometimes you can't rush it so there are going to be power issues forever. There are going to be election issues yeah. because by November 5th, Election Day, this is not going to be cleared up in areas around Georgia, areas around North Carolina, areas of Tennessee. So there's a lot of concern in a lot of areas, but mostly and, and top line, uh, the, the, the life story, the lives lost here, we, we have yet to start counting. And it may take a while before we actually know the, the true count when it comes to that, the other thing, too, is, you know, when you live in an area like that and there's uh, a sense of community and, and, and pride, you, you think, OK, I want to rebuild. I want to stay in my community. But you see the devastation. You wonder how many people will just throw up their arms and say, well, I I'm just going to have to move somewhere else. Yeah, there's there's just because you want a town to get rebuilt doesn't mean it can. And. I, I don't want to put the cart before the horse here. I want to find people. I want to find them alive. I want to get them the help they need. But that's going to be a huge part of this conversation. It's going to be heart-wrenching for a lot of folk. What's next? Spirit Airlines' effort to restructure its debt and avoid filing for bankruptcy has hit a snag after no, months of talks. not Spirit Airlines. So your favorite airline, Tony. I get that big seat. <laughs> I just, I, we, and I don't recline in comfort because you can't recline on the big seat. You know that, right? If you I get the so-called first-class big seat, which I have, you have been in. We have flown on that. Yes. You can't recline. You can't, you can't lean back. And I say thank you. You're welcome. As, as someone who is 6'3 and can't stand it when somebody moves their seat, sometimes angrily, four or five inches back into my lap, it's nice that you can't recline. Why are you if, so hateful? If I'm going to be uncomfortable on a flight, everyone has to be uncomfortable on a flight. That's time. not even science. It doesn't even make any sense. But Spirit Airlines... It looks like they, uh, you know, are not going to be able to reach a deal uh, to avoid filing for bankruptcy. So who knows where Spirit Airlines will be one year from now? Filing I'm guessing for, not in an airport. Filing for, 
filing for bankruptcy is different than whether or not they can continue as an airline. Yes. That's about resetting uh, the creditors, resetting the, the, the debt. The question is, is Spirit Airlines nothing more than the nickelback of airlines? Everybody likes to complain and likes to make fun of it and everything else. They're Canadian? But they do a fun... <laughs> yes. They're Canadian. Every ticket comes with a jar of maple syrup. <laughs> uh, that, that it's just they're fun to make fun of, but the truth is they do a fine job because they've done a fine job for me. Really? I'd be thrilled. You're to going s- with that? I, I, if Can Spirit I remind Airlines, you of the flight that we took back on Spirit Airlines? Oh, it was disgusting. It was awful. So we, we were flying back from Las Vegas. Right. To Indianapolis. And uh, they made an announcement uh, while we were waiting at the gate to board the airplane. They said, listen, uh, you may want to use the bathroom now before you get on the plane because we're only going to have one working bathroom. That is what they said. And and Finger said, that's not going to affect me. I've got the big seat. Who's even going to know? And then they followed it up with, you know, if you're hungry or want a beverage, you may want to pick it up before you get on the plane. We only have one beverage cart. They didn't say that, did they? Yes, they did. Is that right? Yeah. You were running at the ba- to the bathroom. You must have missed that conversation because they warned us that they only had one bathroom well, on the that's plane. That's because I'm not an animal like, <laughs> like some people. All right. May- maybe, it- maybe they're a problem. Maybe they're a problem. But I think all airlines are a problem. You know, if we were to rank the things that we talk about, air- being infuriated with airlines, and we wonder, we're like, how come we don't have an airline sponsor? How come we don't have an official airline sponsor? Oh, well, good news. I actually got an email. Uh, next week, we picked up a sponsor. TSA is going to sponsor us. The TSA? Us. Yeah, they're going to sponsor us. Uh, well, I do love the blue glove. <laughs> it's so comforting. What is barbecue without bourbon? It's still delicious. But bourbon is also delicious. It's Eat, Drink, Smoke. I'm Tony Katz. That right there is America's favorite amateur drinker, Fingers Malloy. Uh, We have been part of this Grant County Barbecue uh, Showdown 2024 Mississinawa Cigar uh, Company. Fantastic place. The owners here, they were were tired of driving an hour to a cigar lounge, so they just opened their own cigar lounge, (laughs) which is, Fingers Malloy, the American dream. I was going to say, God bless America. God bless America. America, right there. Julian Miller joins us right now. He is right. the bourbon steward here at Mrs. Cinema Cigar Company. They have their own bourbon uh, steward, sir. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I'm the bourbon steward. So basically what that is is I went through a program through Staven's Thief. Ah, uh, great yeah, people. Yeah, great people. Amazing, amazing opportunity, amazing program. I uh, went through that program in order to be the executive bourbon steward here uh, and just blessed Beyond measure to be a part of uh, Miss Cinewall Cigar Company. And blessed to bring us from Old Forester, the 1924 uh, oh, yeah. is a, a beautiful pick. Coming in, Fingers Malloy at 100 proof. Mm. A little applause oh, yeah. right there. Anything 100 proof or over gets applause from Fingers Malloy, but not a bottled in bond. Usually 100 proof would signify Usually. a bottled in bond, the same distiller in the same distilling season. Uh, this comes in with a mash bill, 79% corn, 11% rye, 10% malted barley. And any time, Julian, yeah. you hear 79% corn, you think to yourself, this is going to be a sweeter product. It's going to be a sweeter product. Yeah, low rye. Usually that's what I reach for, just because I want that deep, full-bodied oak presence in my bourbon, but you're 100% right. Usually that low rye, you know, you're going to think high corn is going to be a a much sweeter bourbon, but when you look at this and that color, um, you can definitely tell that that oak has penetrated that juice, and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful dark color. So, So Fingers, this this is as traditional a bourbon look as we got. You can argue it's a little bit uh, of, in the Auburns, you can argue it's a little bit uh, that, that right amount of of gold, but it's got the dark richness in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And on the nose, for me, you get that oak, but also that sweetness is there. It's almost like a little bit of a, a dark fruit. Uh, yeah. And a nice amount of oak. There's no, uh, you know, for 100 proof, you're not getting much of an alcohol ethanol right. on you the gotta nose. you got to really bring it into the nose yeah, to do. really you get do. that ethanol you feel. Uh, so yeah. when, 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 you, when you do this on the nose there, Julian... Right. 
Uh, we, we often discuss that we can pick up dark fruits and then we can argue of yeah. what that is. Do we get an oak nose or, or, or not? The nose has so much more uh, connections to, to flavor than, than you think. And, sure. and getting a nose really can kind of set a palate and also be beguiling when you actually Absolutely. take that, that first sip and, and yep. test the palate itself. What does this nose tell you? I mean, for me, uh, and I, I think the, the beautiful thing with bourbon, whether it's the nose, the palate, the finish, everybody's going to get something a little bit different, right? Um, so for me, you know, I get a lot of bitter coffee, kind of when I'm smelling this. Oh, you made that up. You do not get I'm bitter getting, coffee. That's a lot. Or, I, I, I'm getting thing? a lot of, I'm getting a little bit of bitter coffee on my nose here, and that's probably because my nose always thinks oak first. So I'm looking for those very rich, earthy uh, uh, tones on my nose, where I know other people like you guys probably – Maybe, maybe your brain is thinking dark fruit. And I do believe dark fruit is there for sure. Um, you're definitely going to get some of that. You're definitely getting some dark fruit. Well, certainly Absolutely. coffee would be able to play in that fruit world. Yeah, because for it's, sure. it's, it's the same 100%. thing. But the idea of bitter, now you're, you're adding a, a level of description to coffee that we would all know. Mm-hmm. In, and to you, how do you describe that difference between coffee right. and bitter? Well, for me, like, let's think about, so since we're pulling in fruits, right? Let's think about, like, origin of coffee. So if we're thinking about, like, an African coffee, usually your African roasts are probably going to have more of a fruity undertone to them, correct? So a lot of times, thinking about that, so when I'm saying bitter, like, there's more, more acidic, right? A little bit of a bitterness. I, I always equate that Cameroon, that African coffee, to being a little bit more bitter just based off of those fruit notes that are there. And so I think we're actually probably blending things together. Like, you guys are getting the fruits I'm getting a little bit of that bitterness, that little bitter coffee. That's kind of where my brain equates it to. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's what I'm kind of getting on that nose. But I definitely do get that fruit that you guys are talking about, that dark fruit. What we like to do sometimes when we're reviewing is kind of get uh, take a peek of what other people are saying about a bourbon. Sure. And we're always amazed at uh, the people who really break it down. And they, oh, I'm getting 10, 11 sure, different absolutely. notes. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, are, right. are you that type of person? Yeah. Honestly, uh, are you full of crap? That's what Fingers Malloy is. Oh no, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. Right here. Honestly, I don't. I don't always try to find the complexity in things. Um, I mean, a lot of bourbons can be be very complex. Um, Whether you're talking bourbon, Scotch, whiskeys, Tennessees, but for me, I try to try to bring it down to about three to different core notes that I'm getting, and then cut it off from there. I mean, you can. Some of these, some of these bourbons and the things that we drink, you can go on and on and on and on if you really wanted to. But um, I try to. I don't tend to be too complex, to be honest with you. That's a great question. That's Julian Miller right there, uh, the bourbon steward at Mrs. Cinema Cigar Company. Enough talking. Let's drink. Fingers Malloy, you ready for this? I've been ready for this all day. Let's He's going to do what's known as the Kentucky Chew, ladies and gentlemen. Going to move it around the palate, try and get a feel for the flavors. You might want to take two sips. The first to set the taste buds. The second sip to really get an understanding of the flavors. This is the Old Forester 1924. There are a host of of Old Foresters. Never, I mean, one name that puts out a tremendous number of opportunities uh, there does Old Forester. But Fingers, you've taken uh, your sip. You've done the Kentucky Chew, sometimes referred to as the Saginaw Swish. That's right. Where are you? Well, first of all, you would never know that's 100 proof. Right. Uh, You know, there's a little bit of a a sting on the tongue. There's no, uh, you know, kind of burning or or even, even a gentle warmth in the chest. And Tony often says that I say that a lot because I'm dead inside. Right. Uh, but uh, there's, Science. Yeah, there's really none of that. Uh, that dark fruit is still there. Like a, it, I, It's messing me up. Either It's like a little bit maybe apple, but then I go to, to plum. And then that oak is there. And it, it to me, it's just a fine sip in bourbon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something that I, I would not want to... to Make an old fashioned out of this. Right. I, this is just. I would like this neat. Yep. yep. All right. For so sure. I'm going in the old Forester 1924. We are doing this neat. Uh, to your health. To your health, uh, everybody here at Mrs. Cinema Cigar Company. Here we go. Here I'm going in. I'm going. Pray for me. Here he's, I go. <laughs> he's going in, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing what we like to call the Memphis Munch. Mm. There you mm. go. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Hee <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's right on the tongue. Yeah. Oh, All right, so that is a lot of dancing on the tongue. There was almost there. There is a, a slight bit of cinnamon on the tongue. The very very little heat center chest. Nothing going down. Uh, you said plum fingers, Malloy. Ah. Uh, 
it goes back to that whole dark fruit conversation versus a stone fruit conversation. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a little more into something um, thick and crisp is where I am with the fruitiness of this. There is a nice oak undercurrent. There is a little bit of a nuttiness mm -hmm. that I think I grab from it. Now here comes Julian Miller to tell us why we're wrong. All right, let me let me go ahead and get a get a sip here. Right, he's going in. Uh, is is Julian uh, uh, Miller doing the Mississippi Munch? Is what they call it here <laughs> in Gas City, uh, right there, working it through. Okay, well, I think you guys are definitely right. You definitely get a a good good bit of bit of sting on that tongue. Nothing nothing crazy. There's no big Kentucky hug here. Um, I don't get that that big finish down deep down in my chest. Um, but I think for me... By the way, we haven't used Kentucky yeah. Hug as an expression <laughs> on the show before. <laughs> that, right. We're about to make t-shirts. I, I like that. I like that. Go ahead and use you, that one. You saw my but, eyebrows uh, raised yeah, when he said that. <laughs> Your eyebrows haven't come down yet. <laughs> but uh, but for me, I do get a lot of those baking spices. I, I think you're you're right on there. A little bit of cinnamon. There's some clove here. Um, there's a little bit of clove. In the finish. Yeah, definitely in the finish. And a little bit of nutmeg, but not a ton. But for me, the reason why I chose this is... I'm all oak, man. I'm, I'm such a such a big, heavy oak type of guy. Um, and this is just straight sweet oak. Honestly, if you think about it, maybe a hint, just a hint of tobacco, just a little bit. Um, it's not overpowering. But you're right. Like the, at, the, at the front of the palate, there definitely is, whether, whether you want to call it a stone fruit or like a, like a, almost like a berry, like a plum, um, there, there is that as well. So I think we're... I think we're all on, on onto something here. The the baking spice conversation, I think, gets a lot of people because it, it's when we talk about, for example, spice in a cigar. Sure. You could do black pepper, white pepper, red pepper, and try right, and right. create differentiation right. uh, uh, there. Clove is its own specific flavor category, and most people can understand what clove is. Baking spice is where people get very very lost as you describe it mm -hmm. because there are a fair amount of bourbons and a fair amount of rice mm -hmm. that can really present that absolutely we think of baking spices walking into grandma's house and there's the pumpkin bread yep. uh yep. you know just cooling on the sill how do you describe uh, that baking spice to people i mean so if i'm gonna do like a baking spice i'll probably like we just said i'll probably try to tie it in some type of pie right so remember how you were talking about when you kind of you almost had that um that bready pastry type of type of feel. I, I believe mm. you said that kind of when you were when you had that. So maybe what we're doing here is almost like a like a blackberry pie, a little bit of cinnamon on top. You kind of got that that pastry feel a little bit. Obviously, you know, we're not we're not eating a pie here, yeah, but but when but I kind of get that a little bit. When I talk about bready, which is a great way to describe yeah. many many things, that many of them, it usually refers to if for me yeah. a level of thickness. Okay. What are you feeling yeah. in the cheek? What are you feeling yeah. on the tongue? Is there almost a chew gotcha, that gotcha. comes from the bourbon itself? Right. And see, for me, the way that the way that I describe that is it being viscous, right? Um, it being rich, it being full. So that could definitely make sense when you're talking about bready, because right. bready does what? Like it, it fills that mouth, you know what I mean? And you kind of got to chew on it, and and it can stick. T it sticks to the like if you you remember when Mama used to uh, make you that bologna sandwich? Our Mama? Yeah, oh, I do hey, remember. Straight up. And, uh, and who does it? Who you can took forget a bite Mama's of that bologna, bologna sandwich? Used to, it used to stick to your the roof, and you had to take your thumb and get it. You know what I mean? Right. Like so, yeah, I get it. Like there's that that fullness, that thickness, and the richness um, in that bourbon for sure. Now, we've seen an explosion in popularity in bourbon over the past sure. maybe, maybe almost two decades now. Do you find that that is, is it's still still growing in popularity or as has everyone is struggling to pay the bills? Uh, maybe that's starting to that trend is starting to slow a little bit. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, what I've actually seen, because I've, I've kind of dove deep into the cocktail world a little bit as well. What I've seen for a lot of bourbon drinkers is that they're getting into other things as well. I, I, to me, I think bourbon and whiskey alone is the principle, and I think what it can do is it can open up doors into allowing your palate to enjoy other things. So now when I go out and buy a bottle of gin, I'm able to pick things up. Or if I go out and buy a tequila, I'm able to pick things up. So I think, I think, it's, I think the bourbon industry and just the people that are enjoying it are getting more diverse uh -huh. um, and they're learning what to buy what not to buy um, and how to really spend their money and you'll see it across a lot of different um, like manufacturers like a lot of 
your distillers are trying to put out bottles that are affordable um, that people can buy. Okay. Uh, my other question is, you know, we've had a, a great event here. We had so many people uh, enjoying drinks. What have people been drinking today? Yeah, so I think because of this, it's a little warm. Uh, people have been either one getting Has it been Zima? getting Has really, Zima? really uh, kind of kind of fruitier drinks. Right. Which hey, why not? It's 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 kind of like it feels a little bit like summer. Uh, people have been enjoying their draft beers, which is always always big. Absolutely. But uh, but we have had some people come in and grab some bourbons and even ask, hey, can you give me a a cocktail that is a little bit more fun, a little bit more fruit forward? And so what I've been doing, I, I've made a couple New York sours for people. Uh, and I, I think it's the, the the best summer bourbon drink you can have. It's my favorite. Which one is that? It's a New York sour. A New York sour. Yeah. Def- uh, give us a recipe. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What is Julian Miller, Mr. Cinema Cigar Company, what is a New York sour? So and if you say something political, I will be hey. overjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> so a New York sour, basically, I'll actually just break it all down for you. So it's two ounces of whatever bourbon you like. Usually I like, I like to try to have a fruit-forward bourbon. Uh, and then from there, you're going to have three quarters of a simple syrup, okay? Three quarters of lemon juice. Uh, usually, I add in an egg white. So I'll add in like one ounce of an egg white. And what an egg white does is it kind of takes all those flavors and, and pulls them together. So it has that balance, right? Do you then bake at 350? What? I, hey, yo, I wish I could. I wish <laughs> I could. But after that, um, what you do is you, you pour that into a glass, and then you float red wine on top. Wow. So you'll float whether... Wait, did you shake it to cr- you let the egg so, white yeah, create yeah. a little you, froth? You, you're going to shake it. So you'll do a dry shake, right? So a dry shake is without ice. Right. Okay. And then you'll do a wet shake with ice. That way that froth can really, really froth up. Kind of set. And it depends on what you like. Some people like that red wine to sit on top. So they'll use a spoon and, you know, kind of kind of put it on top of the bottle. I you, like mine to bleed through. So you're I using a Cabernet? You're using a, a table red? You, I you usually the dryness, use, or I you, use either one or two things. I'll use a Pinot because a Pinot is a little bit more lighter. So, right. if I, so if I ask somebody if they like red wine and they're like, eh, I'll use a Pinot, right? A little lighter. If somebody really loves red wine, then I'm definitely going to use something that's a little bit more rich and more dark. Because you're taking a super sweet base and then by adding wine, you're, 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 yeah. you're, as, you're, you're dem- making a demand of people yeah. on, on, on the drink. What, what do you want? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's nutty. That I, is a nutty drink. I, I almost drink one of those a day. Well, I'm not a, you know, we I, need to talk to you about your it, it's, it's, about your issues. Yeah, we might need to. <laughs> and that right there is Julian Miller. Now, Figures Malloy, uh, this, by the way, is a 10-year. Yeah. This is a 10-year uh, bourbon. I've seen it priced two ways, Figures Malloy. Uh-huh. Is this in your liquor cabinet between $125 and $200 a bottle? Ah, 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 ah. $200 a bottle, uh, even at 120 Listen, it's wonderful. And yeah. I think if you see this at your favorite lounge, you, you grab a pour. That's a little tough for, for people to, to fit in their budget. Uh, I would definitely have it at my local lounge. Yeah. It, 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 by the way, if you're getting this at the lounge and using it in a New York sour, is that what they called it? In a New right, York right. Sour, I will personally hit you with a stick. Yeah. We, don't we, you? We, we don't need to do don't, that. Don't, yeah. don't you dare. <laughs> um, there, there is something joyously smooth here yeah. uh, going on. 200 is is a hard one it's a, it's to, a to comprehend mm-hmm. uh, right there. But is it... Is it worthwhile? Yes. Because as a matter of balance, that's really, really well played. Yep. Really well done yep. uh, piece. Uh, Julian, before, before we let you go, yep. when, you're, when you're reaching, when you're seeing what's, what's out there, paying attention to the market, what is pound for pound for you uh, the best bourbon or, or the, the most worthwhile bourbon at the moment? No pressure. We all oh, just man. need to know desperately. That's, that's but no pressure a, whatsoever. You know, honestly, lately, um, I've, I've enjoyed, this is an Indiana brand, um, but I've enjoyed West Fork Whiskey a lot. If you, if you guys ever they're see. They're out of Westfield, they're Indiana. They're out of West Fort, Indiana. Um, if you guys see those, grab them. Um, they, they do a lot of good finished products. Um, you yeah. know, I, I was on a, I was with, with some guys here, here in town. We, we, we shared that maple finished. And, and they're, they're phenomenal. Um, absolutely. They're phenomenal. Now, they're, and, and I, I will tell you, their finished products aren't always so brash, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're getting a finished bourbon, usually whether it's a cab finish or a Amberana finish, like you're going to, it's just going to 
be all Amberana or all rum or what have you. Uh, Barrel Craft these, Spirits does a wonderful yeah, Amberana these, finish. These here Terrific. honestly still represent bourbon in a really, really good way. But again, for me, um, I'm a high corn, low rye guy. Mm -hmm. And most of these are extremely high corn for using the best corn in the world, Indiana. But, uh, but yeah, they're using great corn. But I will say, if I was going to spend this type of money, um, one bottle that, that I really enjoy that I will always kind of put up top there is Evan Williams 12 Year. And, That's a pick. Yeah, and, and listen, it's it's huh. 100, 150 bucks. I, I would pay it over and over again. It's it's so hard to get. You have to go through uh, their tour um, at Evan Williams in Louisville in order to get it at the end of the tour. That's the only way you can get it. They sell it in Japan, or you got to go through the tour and buy it at the end. Um, it might be cheaper to go to Japan. It might I don't be know. cheaper. But uh, phenomenal, phenomenal bottle. Again, heavy, heavy, heavy oak, super viscous, sits on my mouth a while, um, and, and I just... I, I just chew on. I mean, it's such a such a phenomenal bottle. So, absolutely. I think it's clear at this point that we need to do some sort of bourbon trail tour. Oh yeah, put it together. I, well, I I have been saying that you should put this together <laughs> for years now. I have been saying, fingers yeah. Malloy, make this happen. Well, yeah. I'm trying to buy a Greyhound bus. Is that what I'm you're trying just, to? Do? I'm just leasing it right now. I know. So. I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. That's Julian Miller. You can give him a hand right there. Julian awesome. Miller. Thank you. Mrs. Cinema Cigar uh, Company. Find everything we do at EatDrinkSmokeShow.com. This you is guys. Eat Drink Smoke. I appreciate it. Follow Eat Drink Smoke on social media, on Twitter, at Go Eat Drink Smoke, on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Eat Drink Smoke, and Instagram, at Eat Drink Smoke Podcast.